Coming up on Regarding Men, killing sports with gynocentrism and social justice. Well, welcome everyone to yet another edition of Regarding Men, a place where we hold men in high regard and where red pill isolation comes to die a quick, nasty death. So I'm here as usual. I'm Tom Golden. I'm here with Paul Elam, my good friend, and Janice Fiamingo, my other good friend, both of whom I have the utmost respect for as far as their capacity to see the truth in men's issues in today's world. And today we're going to be talking about sports and about how gynocentrism and social justice and, in fact, politics in general is killing sports. Mm -hmm. Not just men's sports, but just sports in general. But, oh gosh, let's start with, uh, with a famous soccer player. I think her name is Megan Rapino. Let's see what she has to say. Clearly, being a woman, being a gay woman in this country comes with disadvantages. I'm, you know, have been underpaid my entire life. <laughs> she's been <laughs> underpaid because she's a woman and gay. Okay, let's take this apart just a little bit. Oh, yeah. Do you know how much she made in 2019? She made $245,000. She's underpaid, okay. but she's making $245,000. And um, let's see, what else was it? She, her net worth is $3 million. That wow. puts her, you know, her pay puts her in the top 4% of earners in this country. Top 4%. Mm -hmm. And she's complaining about not making enough money. Of course, what she's doing, she's comparing, she's playing soccer. And these men are playing the same game, but they're making a lot more money. Why? Why should they make a lot more money? I'm playing the same game they are. S same work, same pay, right? Equal work, equal pay. But let's <laughs> let's take let's take a quick example of that. Professional baseball, Chicago, for instance. Those guys are paid huge amounts of money. I mean, <laughs> shortstops are paid so much money. It's like it's unbelievable how much they're paid. But then there's what they call the minor leagues. They don't make us so much money. They make only a tiny bit of money. But have you ever heard a minor league ball player saying that it's not fair that those guys make more than he does? <laughs> They're playing the same game, right? Megan, you need to listen to this. <laughs> you need to listen to this. And there's a lot more than that. We're going to unwrap some things today about sports, gynocentrism, politics, and SJWs. And where do we go from here, guys? Mm-hmm. You know, the first thing that hit my mind as you were talking, Tom, was I wonder what you would results that you would get if you went into the paid audience for Megan playing soccer compared to the Men's World League or oh, something that's like an that. Easy how, many, how many people are in the stands? How much are commercial advertisers paying for spots during those games? Well, that has a direct impact on income. Paul, and I'm make... sorry, Megan, if less people are interested in watching you play, which they certainly are, <laughs> and by far, uh, you're not pilot, so you know, get over yourself. Yeah. Um, you're going to end up with less money, and that's exactly what you deserve, is Paul, less money. Mm -hmm. Paul, in 2017, when the American team won the World Cup, the FIFA says that the women's league made $131 million. That's a lot of money. Until you look at how much money the men's side made, $6 billion. Mm -hmm. There's a slight difference in those two numbers. <laughs> and whoever makes more money, that's who you pay more, right? I mean, I want to pay the yeah, people who are making more money. She's underpaid. She's underwatched. <laughs> She's undercared about. Uh, she's, <laughs> she's she writes in pretty low and they give a shit. 
category. <laughs> yeah. I've never watched mm-hmm. them play. Never was interested. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know. I agree. Yes. Well, that and this is this is the issue, and it is so thoroughly obfuscated by these hypocritical uh, political players who who claim that they were paid less for the the same games as the male players. They don't ever acknowledge any of the points that you just made. They don't acknowledge the fact that the the women's U.S. soccer team actually negotiated for an entirely different sort of contract anyway. Yes. You know, regardless of how many people watch their game or how much ad revenue is brought in, they didn't want to take the risks that the male players were willing to take. So the male players negotiated for a contract whereby they were paid only when they were selected for the roster and only when their team won. The women players negotiated an entirely different contract in which they were paid whether they played or not, whether they won or not. They were paid for, they had injury insurance, they had maternity benefits, they they were paid even if they were let go from the league, you know, they had severance packages. And they don't factor in the monetary value of all of that and the security that they themselves chose. It's it's really incredible. But of course, what um, feminist critics would say in response to the point you just made about the billions of viewers of male sports and the billions of dollars generated versus the millions of dollars generated for the million for the women, they would say, well, that's because of sexism. That's because we've been taught that male sports are more interesting and that if we were only told that female sports were just as interesting that all those numbers would change and so there are all you can read all sorts of feminist articles out there claiming that if only uh, as much attention is given to female sports if even the announcers are as enthusiastic about female sports if even the journalists who report are as enthusiastic about female sports as they are about male sports, there will be a massive cultural sea change and suddenly there will be no difference in Mm -hmm. in viewer interest. (laughs) Yes, and apply that to minor league baseball. You know, if only we got really excited about minor league baseball, more people (laughs) would go. No, they're not as good. And the women are not as good as the men. They're not as fast, they're not as strong, they're not as accurate. All of the above. Why should we pay and we, more? I mean, in all fairness, I think we should give the women's soccer team a gold medal. Uh, they, whether they earn it or not. Uh, <laughs> but we have to remember that it's the Special Olympics we're talking about, exactly. not real big time sports. Exactly. Uh, the whole idea that we're going to make people more interested in an inferior product goes against every understanding anybody ever had about the laws of economics right uh, mm-hmm. people are not going to invest in this just just like women's basketball uh, they don't invest in that they literally have to take money from the nba and give it to the wnba because the wnba cannot generate a profit uh off of yep. their sports they can't sell enough tickets uh, another thing that came up recently in the news the fastest woman in the world I, f- I forget her name. Uh, she's obviously a great athlete. She is the fastest woman in the world. And they estimated that there were 300 high school boys in the United States that would outrun her. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, uh, you can Google that. Matter of fact, we'll provide a link below uh, <laughs> on, on this. You can read that story. 300 high school boys oh my gosh. that would run faster than her. Mm-hmm. And of course, that's sexism. I mean, if there yeah. wasn't sex, it, those boys would be slower, right? Um, she oh. would have won. Mm-hmm. If she yeah. had more encouragement. Yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> if her parents had believed, you know, from the time she was one year old that she could outrun the boys, then that would have been enough to have made the difference. And the yeah, announcers it's just truly... needed more enthusiastic. Exactly, yes. yeah. I mean, it's just amazing. They need yeah, more coverage. Really... Oh, God. <laughs> So unbelievable. Yeah, but, uh, as long as it takes her to run the 440, they'd have time for more commercials. No, that isn't. <laughs> <my social. laughs> 
Well, we know that in the case of the U.S. women's soccer team, which is still pursuing its pay equity uh, lawsuit, it lost last year with a very reasonable judge who pointed out all the reasons why the women were paid less than the men, but they're still going ahead hoping to find a feminist judge who will decide to make history by ruling in their favor. Yep. Uh, and yet we know that they played in 2017 against an under 15 boys soccer team and they lost five to two and it was fascinating reading all the articles acknowledging that fact and saying well it was because they weren't really trying very hard it was just sort of a warm-up game oh and so, yeah you know, they, they weren't trying yeah. hard they, they went up against <laughs> males and they didn't they didn't do their best yeah because we yeah. all know that, that women don't push themselves to try to compete with men mm -hmm. they just let them yeah. win they just let them win, yeah, you know, yeah. just to be yeah, nice, nice about it. That's right. Yeah, just to be magnanimous, because we all know that when it comes to competitions with men, women are really magnanimous. Oh, yeah, course. it's it's it doesn't matter what happens. The they bang on about the gender, um, you know, uh, bigotry claim uh, over and over again. And all I could think uh, looking at that so smug and self-satisfied face of uh, Megan Rapino. all I could think really was, yeah, well, you know, one of these days there's going to be a lot bigger, stronger, faster, and more skilled transgender woman athlete gunning oh for you, Megan. Oh and then boy. I really look forward to hearing all about your discussion of gender equality. Then we'll see. The I'll, rubber I'll just be too busy laughing my ass off. <laughs> I, I, I probably shouldn't be that sadistic uh, in my worldview, but uh, honestly, uh, she is uh, at some point because all women, I think this is another aspect of this is ironic that all women's sports seem to be doomed by the trend to allow males to compete against women simply because they identify as male and yes. our our current commander in chief has of the united states has endorsed that notion mm -hmm. um, yeah. it's going to mm -hmm. gut girls sports and then they will turn around after gutting girls sports and blame that on men too of but they course. won't blame yeah. the transgender lobby no no, yeah. that'll somehow be that'll be a patriarchal plot as well. Uh, and and I mean, I, it's that I don't actually think that's going to happen because even, you know, as we speak and over the last couple of years, a very, very powerful feminist lobby uh, joined by many concerned men has has stood up against the inclusion of transgender women in, in women's sport. And, and although I, you know, I do sympathize with those women to a certain extent. Uh, I find it hard to feel very sympathetic for the spokespeople like Megan, who is really, I think, one of the most unpleasant human beings that you could imagine to represent sport to the American people of the world. I mean, in that clip that uh, in the rest of the clip that you you featured there, Tom, she goes on to berate Americans for their racism. She makes reference, it's a quite recent interview. She makes reference to the election of Joe Biden and how that's going to help us overcome, you know, the toxic race relations that supposedly are, are now, you know, dividing the American people. And she's supposed to be a voice for unity because she uses her platform and her privilege as a white woman. Although I, I noticed that she maintains her position as captain of that soccer team. Why doesn't she give it to a black woman if she's so <laughs> very, you know, sincerely interested in anti-racism? That it team itself not. is is pretty darn white. I took a look at it, but there are a number of black women on the team. They could be the captain. The captain you know why doesn't she step down then in the name of racial equality but you know she 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 lectures americans about how disconcerting it is to know that 71 million americans voted for donald trump thereby indicating that they were okay with white supremacism and police brutality against black people like she's just she's you know i remember when i was uh, a child and even, you know, up until like five years ago, I loved sport for a variety of reasons, one of which was it was one of the last, like five years ago, it felt to me like it was one of the last bastions where 
merit was the only thing that mattered at a time when all you heard about was social justice, male privilege, white privilege, all different types of privilege and how we should all feel sorry for that and apologize and step aside and make amends and do restitution. That you, It was a, a sacred space where you could see pure skill in action and where the best team actually won and there was none of this talk and can't and insistence on guilt and reparation etc and of course now that's all over with and now we have athletes like megan rapino incredibly indeed privileged people telling 71 million americans that they're horrible white supremacists and, and should feel ashamed of that it's and those are the people that she expects should support her in this exactly. alleged quest <laughs> for pay equity it's like it's just gobsmacking the arrogance and the condescension and the snark cannot be overemphasized one thing that's going on too uh, and it is I have mixed feelings about watching it. Part of it, I'm extremely gratified. Another part of it just totally saddens me. But, you know, the support that women's sports get from the major sports organizations, men's organizations like the NBA and the NFL and other entities, that is waning too because of the racial politics that are being played on this. I know that uh, the hmm. moment they started kneeling, in football, I quit watching. Haven't watched a game since. Couldn't give a damn about Me it. Too. Uh, I bought this shirt, by the way, before the first time I saw a Black Lives Matter logo on uh, MLB Pitcher's Mound. And I haven't watched it since then. Not watching any of it. Same thing with basketball. Yep. I've totally abandoned that stuff. And I have yep. found article after article after article that cites the money they have begun to hemorrhage out of these sports because the fans, and this is empirically proven, they don't want to be lectured to about social justice. And you certainly don't want to tell 71 million people that because they wouldn't vote for Joe Biden, because they would rather vote for Donald Trump, that they're racist. And, you know, they might as well be the people that dragged Larry Bird in chains. Uh, or what was that poor gentleman's name? Uh, uh, it was something Bird was killed, James Bird, I believe, uh, in Texas by being drugged behind a pickup in chains uh, several years ago. A horrible crime. But that's what they're equating us to, is mm -hmm. people yeah. who think right. and act like right. that. And guess what? That's mm -hmm. not going to get you viewers. That is yep. going to lose you viewers. And they are losing. They've, they've taken a huge dive in all professional sports, yes. and deservedly so. Yeah. They've lost me. They've lost me. I, I a part of me misses giving Paul crap about being a Cowboys fan, but <laughs> but uh, I'll I'll give that up because I will not support that kind of crap. I won't yeah. support it, man. No way. I mean, I I find it like just. It, it is astounding to me that the, and that they will take these losses and brag about them and talk about how well it's a necessary loss as we reach out to a more diverse viewership. Um, wow, uh, you know, in in like traditionally, sport is supposed to be something that unifies and brings people together. It's uh, the, the 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 athletes are meant to well, male athletes in particular are meant to represent the nation. Uh, you know, they literally embody the capacity to defend the nation physically at times of war, if necessary. Yes. And at times of peace, obviously they represent in some way, uh, if not the best of the nation. I mean, they're not all great people or anything, and I don't even require that they be that at all, but they, they right. certainly represent something admirable in their striving to be excellent in their field sure. uh, and, and you know and that's what it's always meant to me from the time I was a child I was entranced by the yes. obvious passion and dedication of these athletes not just male athletes although particularly those but you know female athletes in in gymnastics and figure skating and all sorts of wonderful areas of athletic endeavor uh, you know, to now think that they have to come forward as these nasty, berating, bigoted, and partisan advocates for particular political causes 
it's just really sad and yeah it really turns me off though it breaks my heart i don't want to stop watching this stuff it, I, yeah. I have such yeah. fond memories of, of yes. watching football with my dad mm. and it was like a total escape from the rest of the world where right. you could really get into the game and yeah, that was yeah. all that mattered it's a, and to see you know the beauty of these athletes these plays that they were able to put together same with hockey like it's just so stunning and entrancing and inspiring and to have all that ruined by the pollution of, of bigotry and 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 political division it really breaks my heart yes well said. that's that's part that gets me too janice is that you know i didn't have like a remarkably close relationship with my father but one thing we did have on Sundays during football season is that we would sit down together and watch football. And it was a way that we were able to connect on yeah. something. And, and, I, and, and unless you're a bleeding, uh, crazy leftist, that has been taken out of the sport, that that connection, because it it has also intensified the generational differences. Yeah. Most of the people that are supporting this stuff are younger, uh, more impressionable people and more old school men are the ones dropping out. And I think this really does cut one more time into the father child bond yes. uh, that can be out there. And it's very sad. And I'll tell you what else it cuts into. And that is it cuts into men. Because men in general live in a hierarchical world. I mean, we live in a world where at any time, if we show ourselves as being less than independent, you know, we get judged. And so we lived in this hierarchy all the time. But when you have a team you're following, that becomes your team. And all the fans of that team become your family in a way. And, and we drop this whole hierarchical crap. Oh, he's a Cowboys fan. Oh, he's a Redskins fan. It's like, then we have a family in a way, you know, men have lost that. And that's critical. You know, the, the whole sports things for men is just so critical because it gives them a place where they can leave that hierarchical stuff and be on the same team for a while. Women do not understand this. They do not have the precarious manhood judgment that men have, and they don't understand the need for men to be able to be on the same team. And, you know, the thing that breaks my heart about the Title IX stuff is that you know, this is where the young men make friends. You make yeah. friends when you're on the same team. Your same team is where you meet. You don't make friends in the cafeteria. You don't make friends walking to class. The girls do. You know, they make friends any place. But the boys need those teams in order to connect and to be on the same team for a while. And we've lost that in a lot of ways because they've taken sports and just thrown out all of the minor sports for boys in college, you know in order yeah. to satisfy mm -hmm. this title nine yeah, the nonsense. title nine stuff that you have oh. to spend the same amount of money on on women's sports even though there just isn't as much interest on the part of women you know and it's anytime just... you look at viewership uh you know it's men who are overwhelmingly interested and if you're a, somebody who is a sports enthusiast you're overwhelmingly interested in those who play the best and of course there are women's team sports and individual sports that attract a lot of viewers like tennis for instance they certainly have a lot of viewership there and gymnastics and and you know figure skating etc but it just isn't equivalent across the board the team sports tend to be the ones where the male athletes are simply far superior. And I mean, the reason that we started this conversation was because um, a friend of mine sent me this article by ABC, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, and that they have now actually got this 50-50 policy where they're going to try to give 50-50 coverage to women's and men's sports. And it's just astounding. That less revenue and 50% less profit. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. And, it, and it, you know, they actually admit that they want to bring in more women viewers, but the part of the way they're going to do that is they're going to make sports stories not about sports at all. I forget all the different things that they were going to talk about, but they were going to talk about body image problems. They were going to talk about, you know, pregnancy and how that interferes with a female athlete's 
sports career. They're going to talk about anorexia and bulimia and, you know, all sorts of disability and all sorts of various things. And I guess racism as well, probably white. Domestic violence. <clears throat> oh, yeah, domestic violence. How could I forget? Of course, you had to talk about domestic violence, you know. So they're going to make... Gotta rape, talk about rape. Or sexual oh well <laughs> sexual harassment are you kidding yeah that'll be that'll Absolutely. be way out there too so you know yeah so that that's the only way that they oh well, they admit that that's going to be a primary way anyway that they're going to try to bring in more viewers is to make sport not really about sport at all so one of the few last bastions for men looking on television to find things yep. that fascinate them yep. is going to be totally polluted yep. again by feminist and social justice ideology. And a friend of mine who sent me this said, it's not even that he objects to having more women's sport on television, although, you know, in general, they, this skill level is, is not as high, but, you know, it's not even that. He said that the, the very way the sports are covered is is different in in with male sports and male commentators it's you know you can be honest and critical and and like rigorous oh, oh. in in saying you know that was a bad play you know that was a very bad play why do you do it that way that was a bad decision <laughs> they 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 may have lost the game because of this things like that whereas with female commentators on female sports everybody's a winner you know, it, it all has to be very positive. That ball every must be lopsided. Play, every play was was uh, you know <laughs> wonderful, and she the, the, you know she's wonderful, and she's an inspiration to a generation of girls yeah. and all that. And he said he can't stand that, and it goes against everything that sport is supposed <clears throat> to be about, which is supposed to be about striving for excellence and recognizing when it isn't met. Yes. <laughs> Indeed. And, you know, you yeah, I've noticed this phenomenon in, in some of the stuff that I ingest in media. I'm, I have a guilty pleasure. I'm, I, I like uh, cooking competitions. And mm. uh, <laughs> uh, what's really funny about that is that every time that I mean, and this is like clockwork, they bring women in to compete against men. I mean, there's no problem with men and women competing each, with each other in the kitchen. But every time a, a female contestant shows up, she lets you know that she is there on behalf of all women in this male mm -hmm. And I saw it the other day in a glass blowing competition. There were two female contestants, I think out of a seven total, and both of the women were there to represent all women in glass blowing. Yeah. You go, yeah. girl. God, I just wanted to turn it off right then. Yeah. It's like it's so it. sickening. It's painful. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty yeah. bad. So hackneyed. Yeah. And Janice, your 50-50 thing is so important because it, it tells you that sports just is not that interesting to women. Exactly. And even the yeah. research is starting to tell us this is the case. Let me read you a quote from this book uh, about women's sports. The guy says, uh, where does it start? Gutman's monograph, Women's Sports, A History, is telling. It's the most comprehensive review of this topic, and the first sentence in the book states, there has never been a time from the dawn of our civilization to the present when women have, have been as involved in sports as participants or spectators as men have. Mm -hmm. They're just not as interested, not. period. <laughs> But we're trying to fluff things up with this Title IX kind of crap. And 50-50, yeah. we're trying to, ooh, ooh, ooh. But that's, it's just not there. They're going to fluff yeah. up nothing. Because yeah. women aren't interested yeah. in sports. Not like men are. I mean, some women are. You know, some women yeah, are sure. really interested. And that's good. And women like, you know, Megan Rapino. You know, she's, she's a good athlete. But I look at most women are probably not that interested. You know? No, I don't and think you don't meet many... They're never going to be unless you make it all about anorexia and bulimia. But then How it's not about times sport. Have you well, heard? Well, we all already have a media saturated with shit about anorexia, bulimia, domestic <laughs> violence, sexual assault, mm -hmm. all this stuff. That's everywhere. They don't need to sit through a three-hour football game to get their messages about yeah. from feminists. How that many times? How many times have you heard a woman say, he watches too much sports. He's watching mm -hmm. all the time. I'm just sick of all the sports he watches. Now, how many times have you heard a man say, she watches too many sports? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Zero. No, yeah, don't exactly. Care. I, I don't think I've ever met a woman obsessed with uh, the stats 
of any right, particular, right. you know, type of sport. Yes. Lots of guys are. It's, and why? it's just, you know, a, a natural interest, obviously. Why is it yeah. a natural interest? Well, you tell me. I'll answer my own question. <laughs> because it marks out the hierarchy. Who is first, second, third, fourth? And that's where men yeah. live. We live in a hierarchy. I love sports statistics. I love them. And man, they're getting greater and greater. You know, as much as I don't do sports anymore, it's really a shame because the statistics are fantastic. Mm -hmm. But that's what it is. I mean, we love this hierarchical thing. Look at the sports page. Everything's about first, second, third, fourth. Look at the business yeah. page. Every, look at the stock markets. Up mm -hmm. 0.37 today. You know, everything is hierarchy for men. Women don't give a crap about that stuff. You Not in the same way. You may be something, Tom. Perhaps we can mm -hmm. make stocks and options about domestic violence. <laughs> Yeah, don't, 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 don't give, give many ideas. Yeah, so let's do that by all means. Yeah, I can imagine it. It'll oh, it'll start. God. You know, I mean, yeah, social justice ruins everything. Oh, and uh, yeah, I I just read this article by this uh, market analyst uh, a guy named Philip Stutz, and he did a huge survey, masses of data, and it showed that like an extraordinary number of sports viewers in the United States are just sick to death of corporations and athletes pushing social justice. It was like, it was yeah. way off the charts. You, yeah. know, you know, the kind of 87% to 92% do not wow. want corporations making these kinds of political social justice advocacy types of, of campaigns. And yet they seem to keep on doing it. We've got Mark Cuban, uh, you know, deciding that uh, he's gonna cancel the national anthem because he's just so superior and he's beyond all this patriotism nonsense, you know, and lecturing the the you know the 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 people that have supported the sport all along on their alleged bigotry and and uh, and racism. It's yeah, just amazing. Well, and, and I think that's part of a larger scheme. Unfortunately, I do think that corporate America has made itself enlightened to the idea yeah. they can control the masses. And that mm -hmm. they can give us orders about how we think and what yeah. we bought. That was, and ultimately, if you can control people and their thinking, guess what? They're going to buy your products. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I think there is a scheme behind that. And it's why we see the big tech platforms controlling what we say and therefore what we think. Um, yeah. And it, it's all part of the same sad and sick mess, in my yeah. opinion. Make us, make us hate. Hate one another rather than hate them for their nefarious right. money making by telling us how awful we are. Yeah, it's just <laughs> boy, it's pretty smart. Crazy, crazy, yeah. crazy stuff. And and to be fair, I mean, I probably get some flack for saying this, but to be fair, there is a percentage of men who you could crap on them all day long, insult their children, hurt their children uh, from the sports arena, and they'll still sit there and watch yes. mindlessly. They will They will be yeah. faithful patrons, and I'm talking about millions upon millions of Oh, so what if they kneel for the, the, the national anthem? So what if they tell us we're all bigoted pigs because we don't b agree with them politically? I still like my team, and I'm going to watch, yeah. and I'm going to patronize mm -hmm. no matter what. And and those guys are as big a part of the problem yeah. as the corporations, in my yes. opinion. But he needs that team. Yeah. He needs that mm -hmm. same team yeah. concept. You yeah. Know? Well, and I man, understand you need, it if actually. You need your team that bad, man. I, I think it's time to check yourself morally. Well, he needs regarding men. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There's something yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the things well, I've, on, I've on found. That, oh. One of the things I found really interesting about all this is the uh, research has shown now that the interest that women have in sport is very different from the interest that men have. And what they've said is that women's interest usually goes along with what they call courtship displays. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> things like um, um, gymnastics, figure skating, um, think of the, the sports that women really love. I mean, those are the kinds that they're Super courtship. Nice swimming. Their courtship displays, where there's love makeup, it. there's love it. tight costumes and things like that. And very different from the interest that men have, um, which is more what they call the lek, 
which apparently is a biological uh, experience where populations of animal species will have what they call lex, male lex, L-E-K, where the uh, males will all gather in a group and sh- preen and, and, and you know, show their strength and fight, fight sometimes and do whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so this kind of mirrors what we see in sport today. And they also mm-hmm. said that it's interesting that, yes, there is some research that shows that women are as interested in sport, but they haven't teased out things. They haven't shown that it's actually the courtship display and exercise because women are more interested in exercise in general than men, but men are more interested in competitive sports. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Mm -hmm. a little aside, but the Mm -hmm. research is out there. We'll leave Mm -hmm. some, some uh, links to research out there on this stuff, which is absolutely fascinating because they're starting to find out now that, you know, there are reasons that men love sports and there are reasons that women aren't so interested and that's okay. It's really (laughs) okay. We don't have to try and push 50% 50% of people into being like the other sex. It's crazy. Yeah. It's absolutely crazy. Mm. Look forward to a video well, on that topic, Tom. Indeed. I may do one. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, are we um, about to wrap up here? I, I think, think we are. so. Yeah. I've got, a, I've got a, a, something to put out to the audience that I've been meaning to do the, the past couple of times. We did uh, an installment of Regarded Men on incels. Uh, not too long ago, and there were several suggestions in the comments that we interview an incel. And so I would like to put that out there. If you're an incel, and not just an incel, but if if you consider yourself an incel and you believe you have the fing- your finger on the pulse of the incel online community out there, we'd very much like to talk to you about doing an episode of this so we can get it straight from the horse's mouth, as yes. it were, yeah. yes. about who incels are, about the community, about what really drives the cohesive bond that that you guys have out there and uh, can promise you a user-friendly experience. We're not out to get anybody. Um, Part of the problem is that just like with MRAs and other red pill people, the media has done their best to destroy the image of these individuals. And now they're trying to paint incels as terrorists, which of course is total bullshit. Um, But we would like to have you on and to talk about that. So if, if, by all means, shoot an email to regardingmen01 at gmail.com and uh, perhaps we can talk about getting you on. I'd very much like to do that. Good. Yeah, I'd like that too. Yeah, so there's part of the story can be told, you know, Mm -hmm. rather than the media. Yep. Yep. Are we finished? Other than that, men are good. Wow. <laughs> All right. There How we about are. that? Not <laughs> bad, guys. Sometimes they're too good. <laughs> we'll see you next time, especially in sports. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll see you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.